All right, y'all, another video for you. So today um, I'm gonna bring to you a Beretta CX-4 carbine. Uh, this thing is pretty awesome, um, I gotta say. I have been eyeing one of these things for just a few years, uh, ever since I took my uh, trip to California uh, for some training. Um, a buddy of mine there had a CX-4 um, Californiaized version, so he had the, the stupid grip wrap thing, plate, whatever the hell you wanna call it. Um, on his, so you can only hold it, you know, like that. But um, it was uh, actually quite a pleasant experience, um, I have to say. He had one of the older CX-4s. This is a newer model, and I'll get into that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I've always wanted one of these things because I always thought they looked super cool. And of course, Beretta has an excellent reputation. Um, you know, I love Beretta pistols. I love everything Beretta I've ever had. It's been pretty, pretty awesome. So um, yeah, this is uh, no exception whatsoever. So. Of course, you know, this is your uh, 9mm carbine rifle. It uh, takes Breda 92 magazines, as you can see here. And um, this is the most recent iteration uh, of it. Uh, I guess the, it's colloquially referred to as like, like the third generation. Um, I don't think there's any official nomenclature from Beretta to designate which generation you have. But there are a few signs that you can tell uh, right off the bat. So one of them is the fencing of the safety. So you can see right here, this fencing uh, around the safety is a, uh, well, most recent, most current generation of it. Uh, the earlier models do not have that. So we can see right there. Um, as well, uh, the later generation models also do not come with the uh, little pick rail attachments here. I've got one on the other side. Um, right there and um, the whole like rail kind of forward system of this um, the later generations do not include that which is unfortunate to say the least uh, I was not pleased to learn that because I just kind of assumed that all of them uh, came with it in fact even in the manual that this comes with it it actually expressly says that this rifle comes with the rails and everything but obviously it doesn't so um, I thought that was a mistake on Beretta's part when I bought this brand new and uh, I contacted them actually, and they said, "Yeah, no, we don't, we don't do that anymore. The most current generation models, you'll, you'll have to buy the, um, the rails." So, eh, that's a little unfortunate, but I mean, they're not really that expensive on Beretta's website, anyways, and they're pretty, pretty available. So, it's really not too much of a, of a hassle. But I still, I still wish they'd include it. What it does come with, though, is all of these spacers here. So these are a bunch of spacers here in the stock that you can easily remove um, to adjust your, your particular length of pull. For me, um, this one definitely uh, needed uh, you know, two of those spacers in there to make it work for me because you know I'm about six foot, so um, yeah. But yeah, all, uh, all polymer construction pretty much. The important parts that matter, like the bolt and the barrel, are of course metal. Um, it's got like a telescoping style of bolt, so um, similar to like your Uzis, for instance, right? So <clears throat> I'm not gonna take it apart here on camera because it's a bit of a bear, but the bolt here um, isn't just a piece in the receiver here, it actually goes forward and all of this space up in here is actually a big bolt that kind of fits over, well, the barrel. It telescopes over the barrel, right? So that's how they maintain the, um, the bolt weight needed to uh, operate a direct blowback mechanism, which of course this is. Um, so in saying that too, uh, this of course a simple blowback. This The CX-4 has been around for a very, very long time. I mean, like what I think maybe uh, early 2000s, maybe as early as the 90s. I'd have to go look again, but um, it's been around a long time. So this is a, uh, I would say a proven design and the simple fact also too, that some militaries around the world use the MX-4, which is the military version of this rifle, which has of course a uh, much shorter barrel, but the overall construction is pretty much the same, um, but it's like an automatic, you know, submachine gun style of rifle. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of other videos out there you can watch of the MX-4. I believe James, Re James Reeves over at TFB TV has videos on them. Uh, Vic Vickers Tactical has videos on them. And uh, for all intents and purposes, they seem to be really, really good and well-made submachine guns. So, of course, that carries over to the CX-4. Now, I don't know if they use, of course, like the same uh, specs or like quality of material for the commercial models like this. But uh, I have seen nothing to indicate that this is a uh, sub-quality rifle, if you will. So one of the main reasons also, too, why I got this is because at the time, uh, you know, 
Biden and his administration and ATF and all of those um, unconstitutional entities uh, had decided of their own volition that braces were now suddenly taboo and illegal and, oh, you're making an SBR by having a brace on your on your pistol, right? All that nonsense was going on at the time, and I was afraid because um, I have my CZ Scorpion, which I've reviewed, of course, forever ago. I need to I need to redo that video, but anyway. So all of my braced uh, firearms, pistols, if you will, were in jeopardy. So I figured, well, okay, if I'm going to shoot 9mm out of, say, a longer format uh, like this, I need to get a, well, a 9mm rifle. And I'm not really a fan of AR-9 type uh, rifles. I know CMMG has like their uh, certain kind of like roller delayed system, whatever they have. Um, and, you know, Strybog has theirs and everything else. But uh, for me, I just, I don't like AR platform 9mm rifles because they're just boring to me. So um, I thought about it and I was like, oh, well, you know. Uh, CX-4, perfect, perfect. You know, like nobody talks about these. They haven't really, you know, they, they don't make a lot of headway online or anything, but uh, I figured, yeah, man, that's that's a perfect opportunity for me to get a 9mm rifle. So I did. And um, yeah, so that's another reason why I got this. And also it is, uh, of course, band state friendly because it has, you know, non, non-threaded non barrel, which to me, honestly, is a little bit of a con. Uh, I'd love to be able to put some kind of muzzle device on here. However, it is a 16.1 inch barrel, so there's nothing saying that I couldn't take this to a gunsmith and have the end of this uh, threaded. Um, I know there's a lot of companies out there that specialize actually in, in producing all kinds of crazy accessories and upgrades and things for CX rifles uh, specifically. So that's pretty cool. Um, so another positive as well, uh, aftermarket is actually uh, pretty decent for these rifles, honestly. And, and I think it's mostly because they've been around for so long. So. Um, what else? So, yeah, direct blowback mechanism, so it shoots like a direct blowback mechanism, which is to say, it's a little jarring when, you know, it's a very compact action, uh, but it feels a little jarring when you're, you're shooting this, and it kind of, well, people who have shot direct blowback uh, firearms understand what I'm talking about when uh, I talk about recoil, right? So, the recoil is not a whole lot, but it, it's just kind of that sudden movement of a big heavy bolt going back and forth like that is is jarring to say the least. So it's not oppressive recoil. It's not super bad or anything. It's just it kind of moves around quite a bit. So and that is certainly the case with uh, this rifle. Thankfully, the because of the telescoping design, all of it tends to kind of stay up in the front. There's not a whole lot going on here in the back like you would like an AR9 because the uh, of course the bolt carrier and the buffer and everything has to ride in the stock. But this, there's absolutely nothing, no mechanism back here at all. All the action is, uh, of course, up here. Um, as far as handling and um, shooting, so, uh, actually another thing before I forget, <laughs> an easily forgotten thing, a little feature of this is um, there's actually a little rail hidden inside of here. Because uh, the, the underside of the stock here, the, the, basically where this, this piece of grip is, there's nothing in there. It's, it's hollow, basically. So... Beretta opted to uh, have this sling swivel right here is a little push button and if you push on that and then you kind of, we'll see if I can get it here, uh, you got to get this little piece out here and you have a little piece of pick around right there. So you can put your um, lights, lasers, foregrip, I actually, I actually did put a foregrip on here just to see if it would fit and it actually did. Um, right here in this little slot I just put a foregrip and it looked absolutely ridiculous because I'm trying to hold this thing and have a foregrip like way out here, you know, this is like some Daniel Defense type foregrip where it's like all the way out on the fore end of the rifle where the dude's like doing this, you know. But um, yeah, it's a little option that actually does come with the rifle so you don't have to purchase that. Uh, so you absolutely do need to run some kind of light laser um, doodad on your rifle. Um, it has a built-in pick rail there, so that's pretty cool. I tend to keep it stored though because there's no reason to have it out because in case I bump it on something, you know, it might break because it's just plastic but um yeah i forgot to mention that before i forget because it's a very easily forgotten thing and not a lot of people mention that <clears throat> anyway uh so for shooting and handling so handling uh it is a thumb hole stock of course so you kind of have to get used to that it's not the, the the most mobile um grip honestly I, I would rather like do away with with this part right here i I'd, i would just get rid of that entirely and i think even on some uh, MX4s, they actually do uh, get rid of that. Um, 
And of course, I think the, the, the aftermarket company I'm thinking of, I, I, can't, I can't remember the name right now, but they do all sorts of modifications to CX-4s. And there's a modification where, of course, they get rid of this and they modify the whole stock back here to take an AR buffer tube so you can run your favorite AR stocks. But as it comes, that's how it comes, uh, thumb hole stock. Uh, for controls, the bolt release is only on one side, so this lever right here. It's a nice big lever, and if you are right-handed, of course, it is very, very easy to thumb that up or down as required. Pretty cool. I do wish it was ambidextrous, though, because uh, there are some other features on this gun that are ambidextrous, so I kind of wish they had just mirrored it here on the other side, but I don't expect they're going to do that. Uh, safety is extremely stiff. Like, th this is a kind of safety that you, you simply just will not be able to thumb or finger uh, on, it, on and off easily. Like, you have to make a conscious effort to reach in there and really press that button to get your safety on and off. So, a little bit of a um, not so great there as far as the safety. I like safeties that are easy to flip off and um, I guess hard to put on in case you need them for, uh, well, you know, defensive purposes. So, uh, magazine release is actually pretty cool because it's just like the pistols. So, it's right here on the grip. So, uh, for me, I find no issues at all. I don't feel the need to reverse it to one side or the other, change it around. Uh, even though I shoot rifles left-handed to me, I just use my index finger here, pop the mag out, put another one in, good to go. Um, as far as the other uh, feature about this, so the charging handle and ejection can be swapped to either side that you want. So, and any combination that you want, right? So right now I have the charging handle on the other side and I have the ejection shooting out of the uh, right side of the gun. So you can see here, and I'll, I'll lock the bolt open just to demonstrate that. So, <clears throat> actually I might have the other way around. <laughs> okay, so with the bolt and the charging handle, you can change whichever side that you want it to be on. So uh, it's very simple, it only takes like two minutes. But as you can see here, there's a bit of a, a like a, a grate basically. So this blocks the ejection coming out from this side, so it'll come out actually of the left side of the gun. As you can see, it's open right there. So the, the casings will come out of the left side. And I have the charging handle also uh, on the left side of the gun versus the right. So um, I think from factory configuration, everything is on the right. So the charging handle will be on the right and the ejection port will also be on the right. But because I shoot rifles left-handed, I preferred to have it over here on the left-hand side because it feels more natural to me. Of course, I get a lot of weird looks because um, at, at the range because the ejections are, are, are ejection cases are coming out of the left side of the gun, and most ejection patterns are off to the right. So um, I have frustrated some some people because like, oh, your dude, your brass is hitting me. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. Uh, let me let me just uh, you know, sorry, <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, casings coming out of the left can't really help that. But uh, it's like you're in a public range, dude. Like you're gonna get hit with brass. Like deal with it anyway. Um, so I have set I have set mine up this way uh, just because it makes more sense to me. But uh, if you want more like uh, ambidextrous type features for your rifle, this is definitely a good contender for that. Um, I find this rifle very very easy to operate even as a left-handed shooter uh, for this. So yeah, um, some nice features that people don't really talk about too much with this gun, and is not really prevalent or common um, on other nine millimeter style of rifles. Certainly can't do that with an AR9 unless you get some weird like a uh, purpose-built left-handed AR9, which I'm, I'm sure exists out there, but you have to like purpose-build that. This one you can just swap around in a matter of minutes, so that's pretty nice. Um, let's see, what else? So for handling and shootability, so I will say the, the recoil spring on this is quite stout, and that makes charging this uh, a little bit of a bear. You can absolutely feel uh, all the weight uh, that comes with this. And um, as far as handling too, I gotta admit, like, even though I, I love Bread of the Death, but the polymer molding that they're doing has so many sharp corners. Like, the mold is just very, very sharp. So, specifically here in the magwell, this, this edge right here, right where the magwell is, is extremely sharp in the factory. I mean, when I rub my hand against it, I was just like, ow, dude, like, that's kind of, mm, it's not very comfortable. And the charging handle as well, the molding on that, at the, the nub right here at the end uh, was extremely sharp. Like, I was like, it's just uncomfortable. So I took some very, 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 very fine grit sandpaper and just 
rounded off the edges and kind of made it a little bit nicer. But honestly, if Breda really took their took more time rather uh, with their products, uh, they could probably round out those edges or make the mold just a little bit better. But considering they've made this rifle for like what twenty plus years, the molds are probably getting mm, a little worn, a little used. So uh, you know they're not really taking the time uh, to round out those those edges there. So there's just something to consider. Everything else about the rifle though is pretty pretty slick and smooth. Um, Bolt release is just fine, but yeah, like I said, you're gonna you're gonna feel the weight of that recoil spring and of course uh, the hammer as well because you have to cog it when um, you know you're pulling it back and charging it. Uh, for shootability, the trigger is um, not great, I will say. And this has been a common complaint for CX4s all throughout their history that they have absolutely terrible triggers, and there's a number of reasons for that. I've, I've read some some things. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, there was a military requirement that the uh, MX-4 had uh, that it needed to be able to fire at like weird angles, like straight up or straight down, um, whichever. And there was some kind of thing with the design and the trigger here that it couldn't really fire if you shot it straight up or straight down. And uh, so Beretta uh, re-engineered it and they have like ball bearings, I guess, or something weird in the trigger pack here to make it so it, it can actually do that. And uh, in turn, that made the trigger pull just absolutely terrible, frankly. Um, the trigger pull on this is very, very heavy. Uh, it feels like um, if you've ever pulled like a double action uh, trigger on um, just well, any like DASA type pistol, that's pretty much what it feels like. But it's every single trigger pull it is, is that very heavy, long double action. It's, it's not great, to be honest. Um, and of course, all the components inside the trigger pack are plastic as far as I can tell, except maybe the ball bearing. Maybe that's plastic too. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I haven't really taken apart the trigger pack on this thing uh, because I've heard it's a bit of a complicated mess in there. And um, the the same company that does all the aftermarket stuff like I was mentioning earlier also does trigger work on these as well. And they mention uh, just how complex the trigger pack on these things are. So there are upgrades available. You can modify it. You can make it better. Uh, I don't know if that affects reliability or anything because I haven't done it myself and I don't really plan to. I figured it was just a, a, a what do you call it, a cost of living, if you will, for uh, this rifle is the uh, not great trigger pull. That being said, uh, even though the trigger pull is not that great and the reset's not that great and everything else, uh, I'm still, still able to uh, fire this thing pretty quickly and uh, accurately as well. So I've taken this thing out to 100 yards, uh, just gee whiz, you know, just... As you see it here with a little red dot and everything else, just to see what I could do. And I was getting about kind of the same as like my CZ Scorpion actually, uh, you know, three inches, two and a half inches at uh, 100 yards with really nice match ammo. So that's pretty impressive, honestly, for a nine millimeter carbine that's not really meant to shoot that far. But uh, you can if you really, really need to. So accuracy is there. Of course, it's a fixed barrel design, so you'd expect that. Um, direct blowback, uh, I don't really think affects accuracy that much, to be honest, but um, she's fine. Uh, the sights on it, of course, are, uh, some people would say controversial because some people don't like the fact that they're fixed and they're in these huge, like, um, protectors, I guess. But it's your standard aperture that has a short range and a long range option. Uh, front, front sight here can also fold down and uh, rear sight can also fold down so in case you have an optic that's sitting like super super low here you can actually get a, um, a uh, well mostly clearest picture through the lower part of this which I just realized now the um, the mount I have for this uh, for this right out actually has a hole through it and I can actually still see my my irons through the uh, hole there so that's pretty cool but um, yeah it comes with ample rail space the only problem of course is if you want to fit like a LPVO or some kind of crazy large optic on this, uh, you will have to account for the fact that uh, these these protectors here are, of course, in the way. So I did want to put a larger scope on this, but uh, it didn't quite fit very well. And then, of course, too, if you do have an LP, LPVO on here, you have to account for the fact that it doesn't sit back very far because it has to, of course, clear this, and you don't want some monster like optic mount sitting up here that makes it look all ridiculous and weird and dumb. But you know, you have to account for the eye relief, of course. Now, you can get pretty choked up on this, like, you know, you can get up here even um, if you really need to, but it, 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 it gets uncomfortable and unwieldy after a point. So, for shootability, uh, yeah, I already mentioned the recoil part of it earlier. 
Uh, trigger is not great. They never have been on these rifles, which is unfortunate. Um, I will say AR9s have the triggers. Uh, definitely uh, AR9 triggers beat the CX-4 when it comes to that, absolutely 100%. But there are options available if you so choose. Uh, accuracy is absolutely there. Uh, this will do everything you need it to. And, you know, it's not like a matched super duper target rifle, but it wasn't really meant to be from the first place, so I don't really dang it too much on that. Just as accurate as my CT Scorpion, which is impressive to say the least. So yeah, um, all of the important features that matter for shooting and getting your bullets on target to do whatever you need to do with it, um, it's, it's, it's all here, frankly. Um, and in a lot of ways, I actually kind of prefer the way this is set up because uh, you know, just like a like an Uzi or other like uh, Mac Ten style, uh, you know, PCC or whatever, it, the pistol um, magazines go into the grip, which of course feels more natural to me than um, like an AR style or, or Scorpion, even where you have to put the mag in somewhere like up here versus the pistol grip. So to me, that makes a makes a little bit more sense. It feels more natural, but uh, of course, your mileage may vary. Um, I forgot to mention too that the uh, this particular rifle, the uh, Gen 3, if you will, comes with a 20 round uh, magazine that has a little bit of a like a plastic spacer here on the bottom of the mag. So if you put this in a regular like 92 uh, pistol, it will actually stop uh, correctly and fit perfectly in um, with the uh, well, with the pistol grip, right? So. Uh, nice little addition, you know, 20 round mag. You can, of course, get 30 round magazines. 30 round mags for this are all over the place. These are super common, very high quality. Um, they look nice, they fit well, and they just kind of like, they look natural in this gun. It doesn't look like a gaudy, like, I don't know, AR9 with like the 33 round like stick mag hanging out the front of it. It's all curved and weird. And, like this, this actually looks like it's supposed to be there, you know, which it is because the MX4 versions of this rifle, of course, have the extended magazines. So these these magazines were, were basically purpose-built for this um, rifle or subgun, if you will. And um, Brad did a really good job with these. So I, I've had zero reliability issues with this gun whatsoever. And I've shot some absolutely ratty, ratty ammo uh, through this. So one of my local gun shops here actually had some like surplus, like I guess like Egyptian nine millimeter, at least the, the, the markings on the, on the on the head stamp were in Arabic, and they came in like these ratty, like kind of cardboard cases and everything, just awful ammo. And this ammo would not shoot properly in any of the pistols that we tried, because it was you know, like light primer strikes or just wasn't enough oomph to cycle the pistol or something was going wrong with it. But I was like, hmm, let me try that in this. So I loaded up those crap surplus rounds in here and it cycled perfectly, you know. Uh, good, good hammer strikes, uh, no problem with lighting off the ammunition at all whatsoever. So. And I actually shot them pretty well. It was smoky as hell. <laughs> I mean, we're, there was smoke coming out here. There's smoke coming out here. Smoke coming out the end of the barrel. Just awful, awful ammunition. But it ran through all of it just fine. So to me, that kind of demonstrated, like, the inherent reliability of this action and this system. Um, it just works, <laughs> as uh, Todd Howard likes to say, for those who those who know. Um, but yeah, this 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 rifle, honestly, is, is a really, really nice piece. Um, I, I do like it. I, I I tend to think that some places kind of overcharge for these, frankly, because uh, I got this from Euro Optic, and they were having a special deal on these. I think I got it for like 500 bucks, but uh, most of the shops that I had seen were asking like 650, 680 for a brand new one. Heck, I even saw a shop that had one used, uh, older generation model for like 700 dollars, and I was like, dude, what? Why? Um, not to say that I don't think this wouldn't be worth that much, but you know, if you can get it for a lesser price, why not, right? So, um, yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about this. Uh, not, not, not too bad, anyways. Uh, but uh, you know, for the purposes that I wanted this for, you know, this is uh, very um, ban friendly, if you will, right? Uh, just like some of Ruger's uh, Mini 14 rifles are ban friendly. Uh, this one certainly is too. So for folks that live uh, behind enemy lines in banned states, uh, this might be a, a pretty viable option for you if you need a practical fight, fighting rifle. Now, it's not like, you know, rifle calibers and stuff, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, a 9 millimeter coming out of a 16-inch barrel has pretty, pretty decent energy. I'm not going to say, like, those, those dudes are like, oh, yeah, it's like a 357 Magnum. Maybe. Maybe in some cases, but in general, um, you know, it's, it's still... Um, you know, lethal, right? So, uh, yeah. There's a lot to recommend the Breda CX-4. These things have been around a long, long time. 
Uh, I haven't really heard anybody say anything like that about reliability, accuracy, anything like that. Um, they just have their quirks, and they're not perfect, of course. Um, but aftermarket is out there. There are uh, there's like a cult following for these these kinds of things, and uh, there's some people out there that do some really good work on these. So if you really do want to spruce it up and spend the money and make it really nice, and this would be an excellent SBR host as well. Uh, you know, if you if you took this to a gunsmith and like chopped the barrel right there, right at the uh, basically right at that little cone, you know, maybe a little bit longer so you could thread it and stuff. Like, oh man, that would be a really really nice uh, suppressor host. Put a put a can on the end of this thing and have a nice little you know uh, nice little nine millimeter sub gun package. So. Uh, there's a lot of potential in these CX-4s, and I really did want to bring this guys, uh, bring this to you guys. Um, you know, in case uh, in case you haven't known about these or you're wondering about them or anything, uh, yeah, totally, 100% buy with confidence. These are these are a lot of fun. Uh, I have not met any of my friends that have shot this that have said this was 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 a bad shooting experience that it wasn't fun. I mean, they complimented, of course, on like like the the trigger being a little heavy, but everything else about it was just. Um, I don't know, it was, it was just fun. You know, everything about it was just, it was good. It was good. So, and of course, uh, you know, the compatibility with Beretta 92 magazines. And you can also buy, uh, I mean, Beretta has their own, like, aftermarket, not I say aftermarket, but, like, accessories that you can you can put in this. Uh, it can actually take uh, PX4 magazines, too, with a, uh, a special kind of spacer insert that you can put and magazine catch on here. Uh, you can swap all that out to take PX4 magazines. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that process works. I haven't done it myself because I have way more uh, Breda 92 magazines than I do PX4 magazines. But I do think it's kind of cool that Breda kind of made like their kind of uh, weapon ecosystem, if you will, for CX4. And then they got the PX4 pistol. They're both called Storm. It's, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Uh, I like it when companies do that kind of thing. So uh, if you do have a lot of PX4 magazines and you want you know magazine compatibility with your pistol, CX4 absolutely uh, can do that. So, and of course, I do recommend the PX4 as well. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, just figured I'd bring this one to you guys and kind of talk about the CX4. It, it, I think it's a highly underrated 9mm PCC because PCCs, of course, uh, are all the rage these days. Everyone's talking about them. Everybody wants to do one. Everyone wants one. And uh, this one is just kind of kind of forgotten about because it's it's old and it, it, it came out at a time where people were like, well, why would I want a 9mm rifle when I can get whatever else, right? You know, people remember the early 2000s, the mid-2010s, uh, of course, no one was talking about PCCs until, you know, very recently, the past, I would say, five, six, seven years, maybe. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a nice piece of hardware. Breda, again, knocked it out of the park with this. And of course, it has the service record of the MX4. So rest assured, you're getting a good quality product and... Um, that's certainly been my experience. So anyway, uh, this is a recommend for me, absolutely. And I had a lot of fun uh, shooting this and, and, and just having a good time with it. So it's a, it's a recommend. So anyway, uh, that's all I got to say about that for now. And we'll see you next time.